Good morning, everyone, and a very happy new year to you all on behalf of the Minister, the Kirk Session, and everyone here at Broome Parish Church. A warm welcome to a Sunday morning 9.30 service for Sunday the 3rd of January 2021. Today, next week, and on the 17th of January, we will continue with our live streaming at 9.30 in the morning without anyone here in church. I do understand that things are difficult for everyone, but if you will please bear with us, it is our intention to have you back here amongst us in Broome as soon as we possibly can. Thank you very much indeed.
Now let us pray. All you that are righteous, shout for joy for what the Lord has done. Praise Him, all you that obey Him. Give thanks to the Lord with harps. Sing to Him with stringed instruments. Sing a new song to Him. Play the harp with skill and shout for joy. Gracious God, eternal, our loving Father, we are here today at the beginning of this new year, and we have come with joy and gladness. And we do so remembering the wondrous things that you have done, wonderful deeds in history, and wonderful things in the lives of ordinary people. We give thanks for the birth of Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem, for his life, for his ministry, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your Holy Spirit who breathes life and gives direction to your church. Today we thank you for hope for this new year. We give thanks for moments of excitement, of adventure, and for in anticipation. We thank you for one another. Our Father, sometimes we are not able to raise our voices in gladness and joy. Sometimes we are pressed, overcome, and burdened with needs and difficulties. Sometimes our circumstances are such that we just do not feel happy. And we know that you understand how we feel. You know us better than we know ourselves. Yet, we can come to you as we are. So, we think of the words, Jesus, take me as I am, I can come no other way. So, today we come as we are, with our hopes, our joys, our fears, our sorrows, and regrets too. We ask that you will forgive our moments and times of failure. Forgive the times when we have said and done the wrong thing, or not done what we should have. Grant to each of us assurance, the assurance of your mercy and of your forgiveness. For we are reminded that as we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our Heavenly Father, cleanse, forgive, and restore us, we pray, and make us joyful in your presence, that we might worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And hear us now as we join together to say the prayer that we say week by week that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This morning's reading is from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, 
but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. A thanks be to God for the reading and hearing from his holy word. Amen.
in our sharing. May the Lord bless us as we think and explore His holy word together. Amen. What a year 2020 has been. And we're now into the beginnings of the year 2021. A lot has happened in the past year, and we're looking forward to a different one this time. One thing perhaps that doesn't change, though, is the necessity that we feel each year to make resolutions. Now, we can make a resolution at any time, but it always seems that at this time we think it right to make some kind of resolution, to do something or not to do something. Now, maybe it's going on a diet, taking more exercise, spending time with your families. The list is endless. What most of us realize, though, is that making a resolution is dead easy. Oh, it's, it's dead easy making a resolution. <laughs> the, the, the problem is, is trying to keep what we said we were going to do or not to do. And it isn't long before we feel dejected because we fail. Properly, though, we can make a resolution at any time. We don't have to wait for another year to come round. Now, in the Gospel of John, we read the words, the Word became flesh, a real, a real human being, and full of grace and truth lived among us. What does all of this mean? It also says, we saw His glory, the glory which He received as the Father's only Son. I think it means this. Jesus lived among us. He was one of us. And because of that, He understands us and knows what it is to be human. That's crucially important. When we see Jesus in the Gospels, so we see what God is like. Because Jesus said, He who has seen me has seen the Father also. Now, in the church, down through the centuries and today, we use language of a particular type. We use particular language in our prayers and in our songs of worship. We use words such as grace, mercy, peace, love, repentance, forgiveness, eternal. And of God, we use such words as Father, Lord, Savior, Redeemer, Friend, Almighty, and many others beside. Now, when it comes to the law, when laws are made, we sometimes don't agree with them. Maybe we would agree that the laws are sometimes not very helpful and sometimes out of date. And some people say that laws are made to be broken. Well, we know that that's not true. We know, however, that sometimes the law is our servant for our common good, but sometimes it comes across as a barrier. It seems to get in the way of the things that we want to do. Instead, it becomes an overbearing master, bringing with it fear, a sense of failure, and a feeling of inability, especially when we haven't been able to keep the law, to keep our resolutions. Now, the great reformer Martin Luther discovered that no matter how hard he tried, he could never, ever, ever feel right with God. He tried and he tried and he tried, but he just was never at peace because he could not keep what the law demanded by his own ability. And he discovered that it was God's grace that through faith was the answer to his dilemma, his anfechtung. He would then never, ever see God as judge again once he realized that it wasn't his ability to keep the law, but rather by God's grace that set him free. And the Apostle Paul, who himself considered himself least of all the apostles, was also aware of the impossibility of keeping the law in its entirety. You know how hard it is to keep a resolution. So imagine trying to keep the law in its entirety. It's absolutely impossible. We cannot please God by trying our best to do everything because we won't ever be able to do everything that the law or God requires. Therefore, it is dependent on God's grace. It is God's doing. 
It is God's doing that sets us free. We are liberated by grace through faith. Now, we are told in the Bible that Moses was the great lawgiver, and so he was. And we find these words that God gave the law through Moses. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. At the heart of our faith is the person of Jesus Christ, who alone could keep the law in perfection. So today, on this first Sunday of the new year, perhaps already we're feeling a bit miserable because we haven't managed to keep our resolutions. May we find encouragement when we fall and when we fail, and may we find forgiveness when we err, knowing that God has already provided for us by His boundless grace and mercy. In Jesus, we are made perfect and not defeated. God in Christ is the means by which the demands of the law are met. Think about that. The demands of the law are met in full in Jesus Christ. Where we fail, Christ succeeds, and we too share in His victory, the victory that He has won for us. Our thanks be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray. In our prayers today, we pray for all who face difficulty, those who face difficulty in their relationships, in their families. We pray where there is distrust and conflict, and where children are confused and disturbed because of divided loyalties between mothers and fathers. We pray for peace. We pray for a real sense of direction and healing wherever there is disharmony, disruption, pain, and suffering. We pray for those who face changes in their lives, in their circumstances, through age and illness. For those unable to retain their treasured independence, we pray for our church and community that it will grow and be a place where we are welcome and all are welcome, where all the gifts are used for the upbuilding of your people. Strengthen those, strengthen those who need strength. Strengthen us all who face times of trial and temptation. As we remember Jesus in the wilderness, so too in our wilderness experience, minister to us and comfort us with your Spirit. We remember today those who are sick and pray that you will bring them your healing. For those who have lost loved ones, bring them your comfort. For those who are lonely, bring, bring them the company and the assurance that they are loved and are important. And today we pray for church leaders and office bearers throughout our country and indeed throughout our world, and ask that they would speak with clarity and wisdom, that they might constantly speak a message in our changing world. May the message of the gospel be heard above the opinions and views of individuals, and that the church might live out the message in practical ways and make a difference. Lord, hear our spoken and our unspoken words as we commend to you our world and its people in the great continents and in the cultures that we ask your blessing. We ask your blessing upon us all through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen.
And now may grace, mercy, and peace be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.